Welcome back to the Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Raymond Wu. We will continue our discussion with Mr. Albert Huang, a leading, one of the leading image makers in Taiwan today. Albert, you know, we talk about your experiences as a photographer, both for still photography and for filmmaking. Would you tell us some of the problems and difficulties you've encountered in those, you know, both of these capacities as a still photographer and also as a, you know, a motion picture you know, maker? I think the most of the problem I'm encountering today yes. is uh, uh, media in Taiwan have a very bad reputation. Well, certainly uh, you know, there are some qualities or actions that are questionable <laughs> in Taiwan today, yes. So today when I, I'm, 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 I think I represent a totally different media <laughs> aspect. So every time people will question yes. what I'm shooting this footage mm. for, mm -hmm. or I'm shooting this picture for, mm -hmm. because they don't believe media anymore. Oh, okay. So I think this is the, the, the most um, bothering, bothering things I encounter today. But okay. at the old time, when I just a, a photographer has a camera in my hand walking on the street, mm -hmm. I have a no problem at all mm -hmm. because I only shoot what I like okay. and I never focus on single people. Okay. So most of the people don't want him into somebody's picture. Okay. But my focusing is the whole environment, is the cultural detail. Of course. So I never have to look at people's eyes. Okay. I, just, I just picture what is close, what is watch what is whatever he used. Mm -hmm. So I was quite happy when I was just a photographer. Mm -hmm. But today it's quite different because we're doing documentary work and we have to get the people agree to let us to film yes. him. Yes. So we have to convince him we, we are good media. Okay. I'm, I'm, we are doing this for discovery, yeah. not for the, some, uh, uh, I don't want to say that. Yeah. And uh, so, that's that's the that's the problem today. So, yeah. So basically, you're saying maybe you know, for some of the media in Taiwan, there is that image or credibility problem. You know, given that, Albert, how do you communicate and how do you convince uh, to your subjects, whether you're doing a documentary or you're doing a commercial still photography, you know, with with a, with a, with a person with a, with a subject, how do you communicate with them? and let them, you know, let down their guards, uh, let them be at ease with you, so they are able to give you what you're capturing, you know, in the photography. I think, uh, I think the labeling is a very important thing in Taiwan. Mm. Um, fortunately, I, because I'm doing this for the, you know, for, for leading international uh, media, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite easy for me to convince them to let me film him. Okay. But in, an, in another way, maybe in some subject, the people don't want uh, too many people to know him. Okay. That would make me more difficult. Okay. Because they may be saying, wow, this will be go on air in the whole Asia. The people, how many people will see it? <laughs> so in turn, some people will say it's good because there's a good level. But in some subject matter, some uh -huh. people say, I don't think so. There's uh -huh. too many people to look at these things. Uh -huh. So it's good or bad. Okay. But for myself, I think it's quite okay because we always have to come, because we're doing a documentary work, mm -hmm. it's take a long time. It's not just the one shot stuff. Okay. It's not that we go in there, shoot, and we go. Because we have to get along with this person. Of we have to go to his place. We have to film him several times. Yes. So we have to convince him and let them trust him. Okay. Because some of the balls, because I, I have to, be, for example, I have to shooting Lin Huai Ming, the master dancer, master okay. choreography in Taiwan. How can I convince him that he can trust me? Uh -huh. Trust or, you with the camera. Yes. Yeah. Trust, but actually, it's trust me because <laughs> yeah. I, I control the camera. Yeah. Or I, I have to maybe I have to, in, uh, shooting some people else is a big boss. Okay. Uh, it's so many commercial secrets okay. in the meeting. Okay. And how can he trust me to shoot them but don't use the data? Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a credibility. I have to make them trust me. So mm -hmm. we have to go through a lot of work to let mm -hmm. him say, I'm a good guy. I'm okay. not uh, a different journalism. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, we have to uh, pull up a lot of uh, stuff to okay. convince him. Yes. But sometimes do you find this convincing process you know, a little uh, too burdensome 
you know, a little too, uh, you know, uh, time consuming. It maybe take up a lot of your time just to make sure your subjects are comfortable mm -hmm. with you. Do you find that to be a little, you know, frustrating at times? Not really, because no, okay. that, is, that is the most interesting part of my work. Okay, interaction with people, with yeah. your subjects. And also, if, I always will think, put myself in the different, because if I am the person, yes. uh, who is this guy, want to shoot me? Okay. And with his camera, with his microphone, uh -huh. you have to put the microphone in, 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 near my mouth, and maybe like several hours a day, I okay. cannot speak any words wrong. Okay. Maybe he will use this. <laughs> uh, footage to, yeah. to or something to, I say may come back and haunt me yeah. in the future. But did you ever encounter a subject that after the shooting or the interview or the documentary is done, that he changes his mind or she changes his mind and said that, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I, I want you to give me back the footage. I, I don't want to continue with the project anymore. Did you ever encounter something like this? No, that's what I say. It's fortunate that you haven't, yes. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can say that's a fortune, but that's what I say. That's the most exciting work. Okay. The last question you asked me, why I'm so excited? Because in the, in the previous, in the prepare, in the production, in the production, before shooting, we okay. spend a lot of time with him. Okay. We convince him. Okay. So after he say, okay, that is okay. really okay. It's yeah. not like he's some kind of out of mind and say, probably oh, he's not like drinking or something. So he let me shoot. And after he wake up, he said, no, I don't want to let you shoot me. Yeah. So that's why I say the pre-production is quite important in my, in my job. Even mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. Yeah. But I am for sure, after I shoot him, he will not say, no, I yeah. don't want you to show the footage. Yeah, you That's wanted, why I, yeah before the shooting start, the subject is comfortable with I want to make sure that. And yeah. He want to make sure that too. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And Albert, I was very intrigued mm -hmm. by the earlier you know, discussion that we had about photography's connection to culture. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I now look at you not just as an image maker, but also as a cultural observationist. Mm -hmm. you know, so uh, would you mind sharing us a little more, elaborate mm -hmm. on that notion a little bit? You know, how does photography today uh, connect it to culture? How, how do you, you know, maybe looking at the picture or motion picture, uh, get to know the you know, people, uh, the culture a little more? You know, this is something that's not generally accepted yet in our society, but how do you think you know, that's making photography that much more powerful, that much more, you know, you know, with that much more weight in our culture today? I mean, actually, in my mind or in my eyes, yes. I see everything is cultural. Okay. But I don't think that's why you, but you ask, but people don't think that way. No. So, I mean, for me, it's kind of easy because it's detail. Okay. It's trace. Okay. It's all these small little things okay. people didn't see. Okay. Like why you were set this way okay. or why you were wear this kind of clothes. Okay. It's so detailed, nobody pay attention to. Okay. So for me, it, mm -hmm. that, it's not just my hobby, it's my... Yeah. How do I get, I have a radar or something. Yeah, I this can is your conversation that. with mm -hmm. the society, with yeah. people. You know, with the environment, like you said. Mm -hmm. And do you think that by making photography such a penetrating vehicle into a, a, a people, into a culture, do you think that in the future, you know, maybe we can, you know, uh, given, you know, uh, you know uh, photography a bigger role, a bigger function in terms of how contemporary um, popular culture is developed? Um, well, I would see that differently. I, well, I, as I said earlier, in my work, mm -hmm. in my photo work, yes. I can do whatever I want. Yes. And I shoot this picture, even people don't understand. Okay. But I understand, and some of the, because look at the photo, photograph, it's quite difficult things. Mm -hmm. as, as you say, the most media, the image used in most of the mass media is very easy to read, mm -hmm. and you don't need to think at wow. all. Yeah. Because everything we is have a only fast food culture. Yeah, yes. and, the, and also the picture is a fast food picture. Yes. So you have to see the picture, you know, oh, this is what, this is what. But in my own picture, it's quite different. Maybe you have to take a look. And if you see the difference, if you see something weird, uh -huh. and that's the tricky thing, that is what I like. Uh -huh. And that is what I see. I call it culture difference. Uh -huh. But I don't think most of the people will see that, but I don't worry. Uh -huh. But I will see that was my training, if you say that. So when I'm shooting a film, I'm shooting a documentary for most of the people watch, 
I will know how to use my strength. Mm -hmm. I will use what I see, but amplify them mm. to let people see it. Okay. But in the easy way, in the fastful way. Okay. So I will. I will. It's more receptive to people. Yeah. yeah, because I know people don't understand <laughs> what I'm looking at. But yes. Um, but I enjoy it. So okay. mm. I will. I will put it in a different way. Yeah, mm -hmm. but. Your, your notion of the connection between photography and popular culture is something quite unique. I suppose it's shared by some, but not too many in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. How far do you think that photography today, you know, motion picture making today in Taiwan, has you know, ways to go before we reach that objective that you stated, or is it pretty much getting closer, you know, almost there? I, I won't say that. Uh, I will put it totally different way. Okay. Uh, but you know, because the audience is totally different today. I mean, audience for even you say cultural okay. or for the commercial film. Of course, the audience is quite different. Okay. So I just see because the audience is different. I will not say uh, the filmmaking in Taiwan is kind of uh, how long will it take to make it what. I don't mm. think that is the um, that is uh, we. We are behind or something. No, okay. I think it's the audience different. Okay. So what I, we will know uh, the famous movie in the Cap Number Seven. Okay. The today in Taiwan. Yeah, very popular. Very film. popular film. Everybody like it because yes. that's easy to read, easy yes. to understand. Yes. But maybe in filmmaking, I will see that is uh, quite superficial in a way. Uh -huh. It's not very deep inside the culture. Uh -huh. But I know people like it. Yes. That's why I say. Uh, in my art making, I can make something, but in my filmmaking, I will do totally different yeah. things. I will, maybe I will use some of this and some of that, but I will don't, I will not mix them together because I think the audience is totally different. Yeah. For the last question in segment, uh, people say that you know photography or pictures uh, tell a story. Yeah. Do you think you are a very good storyteller? Yes, I think so. Okay, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How? I mean, can you tell a story just by you know, looking at a picture? Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. Because as a photographer, uh -huh. it's a storyteller. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some people will say photography is uh, exhibition the truth. Yeah. I don't a think picture so. A picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, okay. but uh, it's not a thousand honest words. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's a fiction. Okay. So. Uh, I'm a photographer. I know I'm making some picture up. Okay. But when I mean making some picture up, is I I want the people to understand to how to look at the image. Yes. So I have to put it in a different way. Okay. And uh, maybe it's not necessarily truth, mm -hmm. or, or or you want to say in fact. But that is a so okay. philosophy question. Yeah. But uh, what I say is the photography not. 100% the truth, no. but he can tell the story. Okay. The story will be truth. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. We'll come back with Mr. Albert Huang, who's a leading image maker in Taiwan, and we'll talk with him about his experience in working with the Discovery Channel on doing documentary series on Taiwan. We'll be right back.